Hi, welcome to having a look at doing some simple animation using Maya 2016. There's a few changes since Maya 2015 as far as the menu systems go. So let's just have a quick look um, for beginners to Maya how to get some physics running. Okay, so um, when you open the software, it'll look something like this. So we've got our toolbar down the side here, which has got our selection arrow our um, couple more selections and then we've got a move, a rotate and a scale as we move along and these are our view options down here that um, allow us to see objects from different angles um, simultaneously. But let's start off fairly simply. I'm in the tool shelf up here and I'm in polygons. Okay, so we just click on polygons and I'm first going to create just a simple plane. So this will be the ground that our object is going to sit on. Okay, so we can see that it's appeared here. It's quite small and let's scale up a little bit bigger than that. So I'm going to use my scale tool here and you can see it gives me these manipulators and I can start to stretch out the size of my plane. I can also click on the middle section and it will scale it in all directions simultaneously. So that's an easy one for something like this. We can sort of get it up to size. The other thing, we can use the plus and minus bars to change the size of the manipulator. So if I hit the plus, we can see that those cubes on stalks grow and shrink. Okay, so that's a really handy feature depending on what size you're working to. Now I'm just going to expand this out pretty much to the whole um, size of that grid there. So we've just got a nice ground plane to start off with. Um, what I'm going to do is just maybe assign a colour to this for starters all materials that or objects with materials that come into Maya start out with this simple um, grey which we can see in our outline over here is called a Lambert and a Lambert is just a simple matte material um, but we'll change this by adding a new one so I'm just going to right click when I've got that object selected I'm going to go assign new material and I think I'll just assign a Lambert again so it's now called Lambert 2. I can change that if I want to, and I might just call this grass. <coughs> so now I've changed that to grass. I'll just change the color. If I click on the color, I can select more of a green that I can work with. Okay, so that looks a little bit more like around. Okay, so we're going to need a couple of things in this um, simulation. We're going to create some domino type shapes. So in order to do that, I'm just going to click on the cube up here in polygons and you can see a cube appears always in the middle of this cross down the bottom. I'll select my move tool and I'm just going to drag that up. I'm going to zoom in and have a bit of a look at this cube. Okay, so I'm going to make it look a little bit more like a domino. So I'm going to change to my scale and I'm just going to squash it a bit and I'll make it a little bit taller, maybe just a fraction wider. It's gone down through the ground there, so I'm just going to lift it up by grabbing that arrow and just so it just, I can see it just pulls up through the ground. So it's just sitting fractionally above the ground. Okay, that's fine. And there's another thing that I need to create, and that is a ball to knock this domino over. Okay, so the first thing that we probably want to do before we do create that ball, though, is we want to duplicate these dominoes so that we've got a few, so there'll be a bit of a chain reaction when we knock them over. So I can go Command D for duplicate, and then I can drag that out, just using the arrowhead, and that gives me a second domino. I can now go Shift and select both of them and go Command D, and then that doubles things, and then I'll select all four, and I'll go Command D again, and um, OK. There we go. So I've now got eight dominoes all ready to go. And so that's been pretty simple so far. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a ball in here. So I'm going to click on the polygon sphere. And just as per before, we can see that it came in the middle. So I'm just going to drag it up and I'm just going to move it a little bit so that it is, if I just have a look at it, and I can move my view around, I can see that it's pretty much, when it falls down, it's going to just collide with this domino, okay? 
Now I can change the color of the ball to add a bit more interest to it. So I can do the same thing, right click, brings up this big menu system, and I come down to assign new material, and I'll assign it, again, a matte material. It's got no shine on it, which is called a Lambert. I'll change it to more material. That's nice and easy, okay, and I'll select a good contrast color, so I'll make it pink, okay? But you can make it whatever you want. You can experiment with these colors as we go along. Okay, so I've created the ground. I've created our dominoes, which are going to stand on the ground, and I've created a ball that we're going to drop onto the dominoes, and they should fall, you know, one will affect the next one. So what we need to do now is we need to tell the software that we want to run a physical simulation and in order to do that we need to start selecting some of the components. So I can select the ground here and the first thing that I'm going to do is you've probably got this set in modeling, this little menu system up here, but change it now to FX. And effects has got a menu system up here, and if we come along to fields and solvers, and come down here to create a passive rigid body, so we're just selecting the ground, and we'll make it a passive body, okay? So the idea, the passive body doesn't do much, but our objects will not fall through it, so it's kind of a, yeah, it's just a, an object that is impermeable to the parts above. Um, it's not affected by gravity, so it doesn't fall away. Next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to rotate this so I can just drag and select around all my dominoes here. And I'm going to go to Fields and Solvers, and I'm going to create these as an active rigid body. So these are objects that will be affected by gravity. So I'm going to go Create Active Rigid Body. And I'm also going to go Fields and Solvers, and I'm going to add gravity to those so that in our world, they'll be affected by gravity. So if the ball touches them and pushes them, the gravity will take hold and it'll pull them over. And we need to do the same thing with the ball here. Okay, so I select the ball, Fields and Solvers. I'm going to come down to Set as an, um, an active rigid body. And I'm also going to add gravity to this. Now a rigid body is a body that doesn't squish down. So I know a lot of balls, you know, if you drop a tennis ball, it will um, squash a little bit. This being a rigid body doesn't really compress. It's just kind of like a solid shell. So that's what a rigid body means. So we've basically set that up. We've got our um, simulation ready to go here. And we can rotate, we can just hold down our command and use our left mouse button to rotate around and have a bit of a look at it. And we're ready to go. So down here on the timeline, we've got a fairly short animation here at the moment, but that's okay. We've got only 120 frames, so it won't last very long, but we'll just give it, we can wind that out in a minute. Maybe put in two to 300 in these boxes, but let me just hit play down here and we'll see what happens. Okay, so there you, there you have it. We can look around and you can see now that we've got a physical object where things are starting to fall down. So it's fairly simple and it's an easy one to do, okay? So I'm just going to hit stop on my timeline now. So I can hit stop at any stage and I can rewind it to the start, okay? And I can experiment with my ball. I can use my scale and I could drop it from a bigger height. Whoops or I could drop it, say, in the middle of these, and I could see what happens. So now I've got it positioned on frame one, I hit play, and uh, you can see here, they're quite, um, they're quite robust, and they sort of wobble around a bit, but they don't topple over. And that's because I've got these set as quite heavy, and the ball's a similar weight. So you can imagine these are kind of like heavy stone more than dominoes in the way they're reacting to the ball at the moment. But we can adjust those at any time. If I can stop and rewind, you see that whenever we have a rigid object, so here's our ball here, we've got a rigid body tab, and under rigid body, this object has a mass. So I could turn the mass up or down depending on how I want the objects to, to work. Okay, so that's 
pretty simple to get all that working. There's just one more handy little thing that you might like to use, and that is the Play Blast, which creates an animation that you don't really have to do too much work to save out. So it comes under Animation, and when we come and select Animation here, if we go under Playback, we've got a little thing here called Play Blast. If I click on Play Blast, you'll see it runs the animation to the set size and then it opens it automatically in quick time and now I've got a little movie here and I can hit play it's fairly low res and it shows the what's happening in my scene and saves it out and then you can just go file um, and save and you've made a your first animated movie okay so that's it physical simulation in software is really good because it helps us to create effects that look realistic but they don't require too much effort but they require a little bit of specialist setting up and um, to get them to work so thanks for watching this give it a go it shouldn't take too long to do and i think it's a really good quick introduction into what makes maya different to sketchup that we looked at in our first unit